you something else. Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of I Ain't Gonna Say Nothing, but where we just talk about some interesting topics that are trending, that are happening, or that was one happened. That was happening. So, who's watching the Super Bowl? I watched it. Did you watch it? Man, it was a feast. It had something for everybody, um, including the halftime show. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've never been a fan of Rihanna. But from what I read, what I saw, she definitely put on the show. And there were some shows to really see. Yes, it was trending on Twitter that did it look like she was pregnant. I mean, of course, everybody around her was wearing white while she was wearing red. And you still got to see that baby bump. I mean, throughout the whole festivities, like she had more views than the whole Super Bowl itself. I mean, looking at these numbers, the Super Bowl clocked in at 113 million people 113 but her super bowl halftime show was 118.7 million people yes 118.7 which means there were about six more million people that were more interested in watching her than watching the super bowl i mean honestly it was nice we saw two black quarterbacks for the first time in the super bowl but Looking at them two niggas, it really didn't look like they was full black. I mean, looking at them, they look like they got KKK written somewhere in their DNA down their genetic line. I mean, they both light-skinned niggas, okay? But still, again, at the same time, yeah, mm, I don't think they was black. They was like half black, you know, maybe 45, 50% maybe 35 percent somewhere but still it was like everybody was focused on the halftime show now we can say this it was nice to see rihanna because the last time we saw her was probably like six or seven years ago when she came out with her last album and she really hasn't been performing since then um even though you know she does have her line of what i think it's fendi uh, that she has her Fendi clothing line so we can say that she's doing fairly well and she really don't need to be making music which is okay with some people others is not I mean but then again at the same time it's like you don't perform in almost eight years and how 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 all of a sudden you just gonna come up and be like hey I want to do the Super Bowl like I'm just questioning who is in charge of booking these acts I know they do it almost maybe a year ahead of time or six seven months before you know the super bowl is even really thought about and they start doing prepping you know for the next super bowl but why would you pick someone who hasn't really been on stage who hasn't really been producing music that that way to where they just think oh yeah we're gonna do it i mean every act is different they are every pe every person's accomplishment when it comes to you know performing at the super bowl because someone has a different reach than somebody else you know like last year's super bowl where we had you know dr dre we had eminem we had snoop dogg we had 50 cent we had mary j bly we had kendrick now that was the super bowl for the super bowl because one it was in la so you had some great la greats to really bless the stage for the super bowl now i can understand that but then again after we fast forward to this year it's almost like mm, was it really worth it i mean yes the numbers they never lie but the people is like you know you have people saying oh there should have been some acts in the songs you did because of her catalog is so big so you can only like perform so many songs within a certain amount of time but still it's like was it really worth it was it really worth it to bring somebody out that hasn't been performing in a while and on top of it she was pregos like come on like how are you gonna do that how are you gonna do that to someone that hasn't really performing and now all of a sudden everybody's like oh this is the greatest performance ever that we've ever seen so i ain't gonna say nothing but was it really worth it did you really enjoy it because i know i didn't watch it i did it i just i was busy doing other stuff i watched the super bowl but i once i knew it was halftime i just turned that shit off so i'm just saying i'm just saying it wasn't worth it i mean it wasn't worth it to me i i, I didn't watch it 
I ain't gonna say nothing, but we know niggas can do some dumb stuff when it comes to working. We know that when it comes to getting a job, you know, we want to try to do everything we possibly can not to fuck it up. Like, we'll get in there, say, like, for that first month or even, like, for those first 60, 90 days. We'll do everything we can not to, like, just blow up the spot. We'll show up on time. We'll show up early. Sometimes we'll even stay late if we got to just to show that we are worth the trouble that it was for you to bring us in here case in point so some of you might might not know lotilius holmes yes let me say that one more time some of you might not know lotilius holmes and i hope i'm saying his first name right i mean it is l-u-t-e-l-l-i-o-u-s holmes jr don't ring a bell how about tj holmes yes tj holmes yes that light-skinned nigga that light-skinned nigga who worked at cnn well on today's episode of niggas do the dumbest and damnedest things he thought he could wife a white hoe and she would keep quiet yes so amy hope i mean amy roback um she uh she pulled a j-lo on him don't know what i mean so you remember back in the early 2000s when diddy was partying with j-lo that one night they started shooting and then they was running out the club and then when diddy had to go to jail he thought j-lo was going to be down for her nope buddy she was out she was out like two roaches in the dark well in the light when the lights come on she just scattered away and that's the same thing amy roback did the moment that that nigga got fired and then their relationships came to the forefront it was almost like she did not want to be affiliated with this nigga she really didn't so it just goes to show you that no matter what if you ever find you a white woman majority of the time she is not going to be down for you no matter what you do or what you think because sometimes these white women ain't loyal you can say that these hoes ain't loyal man (laughs) these white women ain't loyal it don't matter if you give her and i i can't believe i can't believe i'm about to say this it don't matter if you give her that lsdd yes that light skin double dick it doesn't matter if you digging her down and you just whipping the slave dust out her pussy it does not matter what does matter is the moment that your ass gets in trouble the moment that the white man just says yep you're doing too much bro we gotta let you go and you think you're just gonna take one of the white women as a trophy yeah you uh you'll you'll find out who your real friends are you will find out who who is really down for you now this nigga thought he can get with this white woman and then leave his woman behind that he has been married to for some 15 20 years that he already has three children with you know you think you're gonna break up her home and break up your home and together y'all gonna start a happy home together no it's not happening buddy you need to think twice because mm-mm, no 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 <laughs> no 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 so We need to really, really think about like when we, when we take this job, these jobs out here, these career jobs, are we really, are we really going to be on our best behavior? Because we can see that one bomb ass white girl that we think that nobody has hidden, that nobody is hitting, that nobody is tapping, that nobody is trying to get after. And then next thing you know, you find out that she ain't for the culture bro she ain't ready to be your ride or die she ain't ready to you know come with you and be with you at a moment's notice and no matter what she's always gonna be there because the moment that she finds out her career might be in jeopardy mm -mm, she's gonna skate off she's really gonna skate off and you'll really find out who she who she really is and they is not gonna stay down for you the way you think they are they just it ain't gonna happen so just be careful my niggas just be careful don't don't uh don't don't tj holmes these 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 hoes out here because they'll leave you with the quickness i ain't gonna say nothing but why is it year after year 
the moment that we get into February and we start celebrating Black History, um, it's almost like Black History. The the moments that made Black History Month so prevalent, so relevant, so inspiring, so for the culture that it made us, we wanted to learn. All, well, most certainly, definitely put their lives on the line, you know, for future generations of color people to advance. Why is it that every year when Black History does come up, it seems as though past 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 and i can't put enough emphasis on that past 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 achievements they almost they're not recognizable nobody really cares about it anymore it it's not taught especially in the technology generation that we all are living in that you know at a moment notice we can just look up any type of influential you know black black history figures that were prominent um between you know the 30 well it doesn't even have to start the 30 it's been since it goes back as far as the 1800s 1700s 1600s you know it's as far back as almost three four five hundred years ago and as as far as we can go back we know that we can look up anything at a moment's notice we can google whatever we possibly can but the more and more we we can google stuff the less and less that we learn the more and more that we can google stuff the less and less that we actually get history that really means something because in the era that we live in no one really cares anymore and i really mean that it does not matter to anyone anymore the 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 importance of the struggles that black people colored people did for other black people for other colored people to now have the freedoms to now have the liberties to now have the acceptance to now have the outspokenness that now have the woke culture that we now so live in no one really takes the time to really find out who did what and why they did what everybody just takes for granted like they just woke up like oh this just this just happened it's supposed to be here it was given because it had to be because no one had to work for anything we now live in a culture and a society that no one wants to work for nothing that everything has to be given to them just because yes just because it is just because of past achievements past accomplishments past struggles past <clears throat> past moments of uncertainty uncertainty and not even having clarity that <clears throat> we are able to have the things that we have we are able to have the things that we have because of what other people did kids today don't know who booker t washington is kids today might know who martin luther king rosa parks oh, um something. Oh. george washington carver uh malcolm x uh who there's a slew of them but <clears throat> there are other prominent black people who done so much for this culture Yes, this culture that we live in that is now being taken for granted. And no one cares anymore. No one bothers to look unless you have someone who actually sits down with people and say, hey, this is what it is. This is what caused it. This is how we got to where we got to for the betterment of things. Kids do not know. Kids don't want to know because no one's teaching them and if they are being taught they're not learning it, it's almost like the saying goes <clears throat> are you hearing me and are you listening are you listening and are you hearing because it's always like you can go in one ear and out the other and i find it very difficult that i can remember when i was in school that 
I enjoy learning about Black History Month every time February began to roll around because every single day you learned about someone new and about what they did. It might have been a little paragraph, just a little bio about them, but then you would have to like go to the library and actually check out a book and find out about them. I'll never forget when I had to do a book report on Booker T. Washington. He might have been the boringest man I ever learned about, but it's because of him that the the Tuskegee Institute the Tuskegee the the Tuskegee Institute was started was because of Booker T Washington some some people know some people might not know it is a prominent black school in the south but as i say a lot of these things were not learned because no one's teaching anymore because now it's like you can teach through your phone and are you really learning if you learn through your phone it just is it's just like it, it sucks it really sucks and then we put our own selves in a position to where <clears throat> we're really not learning anymore we're really not learning so it's almost like black history month will continue to get lost even if we no longer care about what others did to get even if no one cares about what others did to get them the freedom and the liberties that they had to sacrifice with their own life. And you know what? For that, it will be taken for granted. It will be. And then soon all will be lost. It will almost be like a lost society that we read about every time they find a pyramid a new pyramid or they find a new tomb where you know mummies and and all this shit was was lost and forgotten and and no one will ever care again no one will no one will so I ain't going to say nothing, but it's better to know your history. It's better to know where you came from in order to know where you're going. Yes, remember that it is better to know where you're where you came from in order to know where you're going. So this has been another episode of I Ain't Gonna Say Nothing, but I appreciate you all. If you enjoyed this, make sure that you like, you comment, and you even subscribe to the channel. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Will, and I'll talk to y'all all soon. You something else.